Hi, in this video I'm going to be talking about dilations. Um, dilations, in the sense that we're talking about uh, today in geometry class, are just means that we're going to take the shape. We're not going to change the, the shape at all. We're just going to make it bigger or smaller. Um, and it's going to be a similar shape. So, you know, we could do things like proportions and things like that if we wanted to. It's going to be very much like the similar shapes we've done in previous units. So when we do this, uh, as you dilate a shape, you'll see the blue and the red shape here, right? Um, maybe this is the pre-image and this is the image. So that's the changed image and it is smaller, but you'll notice that it still looks like the same triangle. And so if we go through this process and we see that the shape has changed at all, then uh, either it's not a dilation or we've probably screwed something up. Okay, so it changes the size, but not the shape. So a couple of uh, just basic problems, you know, just identifying for the end of course exam or on a test whether the shape actually appears to have been dilated. You can tell here that these two shapes, this is not a dilation because they don't look like the same triangle. This is a much taller version, right? However, if we take a look at these two pentagons here, we can tell that the blue shape either shrunk to become the red shape or the red one expanded, became bigger to become the big shape, right? Same thing here, those look like the same thing, so thus it's been expanded, it's been uniformly changed. Whereas this is not a dilation, even though it looks like it grew in one dimension, this leg grew, it did not get any taller as a respect. So, you know, the shape has changed overall. So we have two yeses, these apparently are dilations, these are just other things. It's not really any kind of transformation as we've been talking about in geometry class. So about dilations, um, if we have the center of dilation, which is point P, and we take point A and we, uh, and, and we go out um, and we connect it uh, with a dotted line, that line would also connect from point P to the new point A, right? Um, that's just something to keep in mind. This is kind of a complicated way to explain it, actually. If you go ahead and, and just let that go for a little while, okay? Um, it's going to make much more sense when I get to the examples. The one thing that you want to do is notice that we have the scale factor. And the scale factor, usually denoted by the letter K, lowercase k, tells us how many times bigger or how many times smaller the object gets whenever I dilate it. So dilation stands for getting bigger and getting smaller. Okay? So pay attention to that scale factor K, and I'll show you how to use that K value in just a second. Now, most of the problems we do, by the way, before I go on, that point of dilation, that center of dilation, is going to be the origin. It's going to be 0, 0 in most cases. Not always, but usually going to be 0, 0. Okay? It's going to make problems very simple. A couple of things about that K value before we get going. What does that scale factor mean? Well, first of all, if K is a value that's bigger than 1, so a scale factor of perhaps 2 or 4 or 100, thousands, right? Just make up a big number. It doesn't matter what it is. Any of those values, the, the resulting image is going to be larger. If, and notice I put absolute value signs, okay? If the value is less than one, the absolute value, so we're talking things like one half, one third, one fourth, that means that the image is going to be smaller after I redraw it, okay? Now what we're going to do though, absolute values are always positive, so we haven't mentioned anything about a negative k value. What happens if we get a scale factor of like a negative two? What about a negative one half, right? And we're gonna see how that k value comes into effect with the negative here in just a second. What we're gonna see is that it actually, not only does it make it bigger or smaller, but it's also gonna do some flipping upside down is what we're gonna see, okay? So a little bit of rotation involved as well. All we need to do in order to get from the original x coordinates to the new y coordinates is multiply each x value and each y value by the scale factor. So say for instance, uh, no, we'll show it in the, uh, in the example in just a second, okay? So that's all you're doing with any of this stuff. Even if it's negative, even if it's a fraction, you're simply going to take the x, y coordinates and you're going to multiply both the x and the y by whatever that scale factor is. It's going to be a number, a fraction of some way. So for example, draw the image of a triangle. So that means image, not pre-image. So that means draw the rotated image or the dilated image or whatever it is, okay? So we need to start here with the original vertices. The original vertices are at negative one, one. So here's point A. B is at negative two, negative one, which would be down here. And C would be at negative one, negative two, which would be down here. So here's the original image. 
we want to draw the dilated image. And the scale factor here is negative 2. Well, that means that the new A is going to be at this location. If A was at negative 1, positive 1, then I take each of these values and multiply it by negative 2. The new A value is going to be at positive 2, negative 2. Because negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. Positive 1 times, po times negative 2 is negative 2. So 2, negative 2. Here's my new A prime. B, which was at negative 2, negative 1, is now going to be at 2 times negative 2, Negative times a negative is positive. Negative 1 times negative 2 is positive 2. It's going to be at 4, 2. There's my new B. And C, which is at negative 1, negative 2, is now going to be at positive 2, positive 4, which is right here. So, of course, the first example is going to be something that's negative would make sense for us to go ahead and give you a straightforward example. But what you'll notice is this. See, those are actually the same triangle. But not only is this one twice as big, the image is twice as big as, as the result as the pre-image. Okay, I know that because of the two involved, but it's also been rotated 180 degrees. Okay? If I took this and I rotated it 180 degrees around the origin and then scaled it up, that's what I would get as a resulting image. So that's dilation with a negative. Okay. The process is pretty simple. As long as you understand, I just need to multiply everything by negative 2 to get to the result. It's just plotting points, guys. Let's do one more example, and then I'm done with this video. Okay. Let's draw JKLM after it's been reduced by a scale factor of 1 half. Okay. So that's going to be smaller. No rotation going on because it's positive. But basically, I could just do right above. What's half of negative 2? Negative 1, positive 1. Let's go find that. That's J prime. K was at 4, 2, so now it's going to be at 2, 1. L was at 4, negative 2. Half of 4 is 2. Half of negative 2 is negative 1. The apostrophe is there. And M was at negative 2, negative 2, so now it's at negative 1, negative 1. There's M prime. And so... I mean, those are the four things. Obviously, it's probably trying to get you to draw a rectangle here. Probably should have said something about quadrilateral JKLM or something along those lines, but the idea is pretty straightforward. So that's how to do dilations. Those problems are very simple. I think that you'll be able to handle those without much of an issue. Um, the only thing that I might say here is if I asked you to write the rule for what you're doing, you would say something along the lines of this. The original x, y coordinates, I could find the new ones by taking half of the x and half of the y. Pretty straightforward, right? So there you go. That's the end of this video. Now on to compositions of transformations.